We have two really great analytics features in our October 2018 update of the Power BI desktop, which we'll be talking about in this video. The first one I'm going to talk about is an update to our preview for composite models and for aggregations. And this is a really exciting update because it's it's going to really allow you to tap into both of these great features and start using them end to end. And it's all around publishing to the Power BI service. We released these features as preview and as part of that preview, it was for a little while only you can be used in the Power BI desktop. If you tried to publish it up to the Power BI service, you wouldn't be able to do that. We disallowed it. But now you can publish them and use them like normal in the Power BI service. So make sure to start, now that we have this ability, start using them in the Power BI service and start trying out these great features end to end and start planning out how you're going to want to use them when we take them out of preview as well in the coming months. Also know that as part of this update for these features, there has been some, some other improvements as well as you're going to probably see. Uh, we were hearing feedback from our users for composite models on the community, community.powerbi.com, and uh, around our blank query experience. And so that's been overhauled based off of this feedback. And for both of them, we have continued to harden the features and improve reliability there, which is what you should expect from features during their preview period. Uh, so as we continue getting closer to the point that we're going to GA these features, please let us know if you have any more feedback that you would like to see us try and work in. The second feature is another update to our insights feature. So we've had explained the increase for additive measure measures for quite a while, so additive meaning things like sum and count. But this explained the increase or it explained the decrease functionality on right click for charts did not exist for non-additive measures like average, for example. And now we are excited to announce that we have in fact enabled it for those as well. And with this enabling, there's actually a little bit of a change to the types of results that you're going to see for non-additive measures whenever you trigger the explain the increase functionality. So if I switch over to a report, and this chart, this uh, column chart here, is using the average of sales amount. And so previously, I wouldn't have even seen the option when right-clicking to do uh, my analyze functionality. But now I can. And whenever I pick explain the increase, you're going to get results back that look a little bit different than the uh, breakdown waterfall chart that we had for sums and uh, counts. And this one is more of a dot plot, and it's all, all geared around helping you understand what could have possibly influenced your increase or decrease, in my case of average of sales, between the two dates. So in my case, 2013 quarter three and quarter four from 2013. And we have determined that more than likely this has been high, a high impact based off of some of the subcategories of products that I sell. In my case, the two most interesting were washers and dryers and projectors and screens. And if I click, you can see all of the, the, uh, the dots here, but if I click on washers and dryer, for example, we highlight those points in the, the dot plot layout of the scatter chart to help call attention to them. And so I can see um, in quarter three, I basically sold no, no washers and dryers at all. And in quarter four, I increased the number from none to 17. And also the, the uh, sales that I got from selling those washers and dryers was much, high, much, much higher than the average sales amount from quarter three, which you can see through this line. And so that had a huge impact on my sales and helped increase it between those two quarters. If I switch over to projectors and screens, uh, this one's not as much of an impact, but it does have some. You can see that it has moved up in terms of average sales a little bit. And in addition, that bubble has grown in size as well, which also probably contributed to my increase in sales. For this chart, you can also see this is option down at the bottom, which is around decluttering the visual. So right now, these aren't actually all of my subcategories. We picked the ones that are the most interesting and also like the the um, kind of a good representation of my data as well. And if you hover over here, it 
repeats the same thing. It's key points in uh, good representation. But if you do want to see everything, you can uncheck this box and we'll let you see all of the dots on the uh, chart. That's quite a bit of uh, uh, points. So I'm just going to recheck that in my example to clean it up a bit. And as always with all of our insights, you can scroll through and see a couple of other insights as well and continue to explore and learn more about your data. And if you like one, you can always hit this plus button to add it to your canvas and start using it as a normal visual on your report. So you're going to now see this dot plot experience in the explain the increase insight anytime that you're using averages or ratios. Anything else that's not either the additive measures, some account that gives you the breakdown waterfall or the this dot plot for averages and ratios, any other type of measure, you can still use insights, but you're, what you're going to see is a clustered column chart that's going to just show you the differences between the two years to help you um, break down what has caused the most impact between those two, two uh, times that you are comparing between. As you start playing with this new version of Insights, make sure to give us any feedback on, on other types of insights you like to see exposed for all of our charts. And also um, let us know if you have any uh, questions or any other suggestions for how we could potentially visualize these insights as well going forward.